He looked up, he saw fire, and he saw smoke in the air, and he heard the echoing of the first shots of the Civil War. Today we are headed towards Charleston. First we're going to go into the McCloyd Plantation. We wanted to do something a little historical. And then after that, we're gonna be meeting up with Sarah's family in Charleston for lunch. And then we plan on doing a historical carriage ride through the city. Update about my foot after getting stabbed by the stingray yesterday. Woke up this morning and it was a little stiff. Uh, have it bandaged up. Uh, but it looks a little better, but still a little sore it's and little tender swollen. and still a little swollen. Ooh, a little blood there. They said that the first 24, 48 hours can be the worst in terms of pain, and then it gets better. Maybe it's So we just arrived at the plantation parking. We're gonna go to the welcome center. Uh, we're gonna try to film as much as we can, but to do so respectfully, we also want to share the plantation, what it looks like, um, what the lives were like of the people who lived here. So um, we hope to learn a lot while we're here. The story of the McLeod Plantation begins in 1851. This is when William Wallace McLeod and his wife Susan acquired the property to cultivate Sea Island cotton. Considered the world's finest, Sea Island cotton produced longer strands than the common upland cotton, allowing for higher woven thread counts, the end result of which was a softer, more durable, and breathable textile. This is the gin house. So you cranked it by hand, 13 to 15 hours daily of cranking. And it took about 24 days to gin, clean, and pack one bag of cotton. And they don't grow it here in the United States anymore, but they can grow it in the Caribbean, and they're still hand-picking it in 2022 down there. was fired upon the first shots of the Civil War, April 12, 1861, just about three miles down on James Island. Very quickly, the Confederate Army was scoping out the island, trying to figure out where best to place their headquarters. And they determined, right here, this hole. It only took about two or three weeks for people to realize, I'm sick of this. I'm going to leave. The United States military said any enslaved people that come to them, you don't have to go back. And you can get nine miles down the road, you're going to hit the United States Navy. They go a couple days before June hits. And the war ends. Mr. McLeod doesn't come back. And his son didn't come back. He tried, but the state said, you can't have this land, you're not 21 yet. They said, we're gonna take this land. A like hundred or so enslaved people are still here. And in your home, we're gonna place a Freedmen's Bureau agent. Now the Freedmen's Bureau was established by Congress to help this growing humanitarian crisis. They just freed four million people, so what are you gonna do with all of them? All of these lands that people had abandoned up and down the coast to go to war, they were now being given to the freed people. And all was well for about six months. Lincoln's assassination, President Andrew Johnson is who he got. 
and he was a southern man. 1870 we see William Jr. Annie and Regina they come back because William turns 21 and he can claim his property and he's pretty angry because from a young age he taught he was going to get all of this including all of these people would be his property and we have to remember that at that time when people were enslaved they were a value they were wealth and so he just lost an enormous amount of value and he's not going to make money the way that he used to because he's going to have to pay him now to work here but very quickly they started to develop ways um, to work around that system we call it tenant farming in the 1920s when all of these changes I told you about started to happen, the addition of the LA's, the big grand front of the house, they started to give tours to people. January 1990, our last McLeod, Mr. Willie passed away, and there are families still out here. $25 a month in rent to live in the same conditions three, four, sometimes five generations ago their ancestors were enslaved in here. The McLeod Plantation is beautifully preserved. This experience for us really highlighted the different realities people were experiencing. Our guide beautifully explained how generational paradigms are not undone in a day, a year, a decade, or even a century, as was the case for those who stayed at the McLeod Plantation after emancipation. We highly recommend visitors to the area to come and take a tour and learn how this location was pivotal in our country's history. We are now on our way to Charleston to get some lunch with the family and learn more about South Carolina's rich history. In case you haven't been with us, the other people in this video are my mom and dad, my niece, my brother-in-law, my sister, and their two kids. While visiting, we made a list of South Carolina foods we'd like to try, and so far we've only checked one off the list. That was boiled peanuts. <gasps> Ooh, whoa. But today we're going to get to try some others. Mm. Is that the best one? <laughs> That's actually really good. Hush puppies, fried green tomatoes. Mm. That's so good. What's juicy? Yeah, that's really good. No, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Hush puppies. Mm -hmm. We should have them oh, in New England. <laughs> I got the shake crabs. Mm -hmm. What's it taste like? It's like, well, you eat the crab, but it's really sweet. Yeah. Really good. What does it taste like? It's really creamy and cheesy. Mm -hmm. Just got done eating and now we're gonna go on a carriage ride. Knowing uh, of just you know a century ago, this area through here, which is very nice today, but a lot of this was tenement homes. And by the 20th century, you had a lot of African Americans that lived in this area. This was your working poor of Charleston, black and white, which is shocking today because it's uh, very uh, expensive. Like I said, and look at the top of it. Gothic's kind of easy. Because Gothic's pointy. Think to yourself, do you want to sit on that? Normally the answer is no, and that's an easy way to pick out <laughs> Gothic architecture. Right here. 
way over here is actually, these are old trolley tracks. Trolleys were big in Charleston up until the 1930s and what happened, uh, they went obsolete. The buses came in. This strange looking, kind of almost scary looking design of the hat thing. And that is protected by a city ordinance. Everything about it is made up of some form of hat. His ears, his eyes, his nose, his mouth. And that was an advertisement for the haberdashery men's clothing store that was right there. So what did we do? We went on the carriage ride, which was a lot of fun, a lot of very informative, learned a lot about uh, this section of Charleston, and went through the market mm -hmm. and got some ice cream, slash gelato. Okay, so we just said goodbye to Sarah's family. They're gonna go back to the villa. We're on our way to a uh, rooftop bar. See if we can get a seat. Yeah. Check out this weird building. There's no windows and the door is like a huge step up. Wild. Hmm, cool. <laughs> okay, let's go. So we just got down at the rooftop bar. We had some sparkling wine and uh, a margarita pizza. Where are we going now? We're going to Carmela's Cafe and Dessert Bar. It has 1,100 reviews, four and a half stars, and they're open until tonight. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> Just got done at Carmela's, where we had a delicious uh, chocolate mousse cake. Yeah, tart. It was tart? Okay. <laughs> it was really good, no matter what it was. Very chocolatey. Espresso! And we had some espresso, and we got a couple of cakes uh, for Sarah's family. And now we're, we're heading- eat them too. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we're heading back to the car right now. We're gonna head back to the villa. Yes, it's been a wonderful day in Charleston. I love it here. Yeah, it's great. It's so Wow, look at that. <laughs> Got done at Carmela's. What's the name of it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which, uh, okay. Just got done at Carmela's. Yeah. Just got done at Carmela's. <laughs> <laughs> Where we ate a delicious <laughs> seaside breakfast. Oh. <laughs> I can't. Where are we going? Straight. Okay. <laughs> One of these times. I'm gonna get on the first try. Here we go. 